All right, just a quick one before we get going. So please don't take anything you hear in today's episode as financial advice. Please speak to a trained professional if you do wish to participate in markets. Crypto is inherently risky and you will lose all your money, particularly if you listen to us for financial direction. So enough of that. Please give us a like, subscribe, enjoy the show and see you next time. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're back with Smiley. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about Smiley. They've been around for a while. They've been working hard. They've been building. Um, it's good to have you. I'll be worried. Thank you for joining us. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to have you. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we kind of bumped into you guys in the middle of the bear market. You were you were down in the trenches building. I mean, it's not like you've stopped building, but I know that you've made a lot of progress. That's why we decided to call you guys in. Something novel, something interesting. Tell us a bit about yourself firstly, and then also what it is that, that Smiley is doing. Cool. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure of being here again. And actually after one year of building. So it has been not like super easy to build during the bear market where like people were like not super happy about the crypto environment in that specific period. But it was a peaceful moment to build, let me say, properly the, the things waiting this bull market coming up. So about myself, I'm Albiwara, one of the co-founders of Smiley Finance, a team that started working on this project like uh, more than two years ago. Uh, most of the team comes from TradFi. Uh, so especially me, uh, spent like four years doing M&A, investment, uh, investment banking, equity capital markets, project financing, private equity, and these kind of activities. And then I moved from TradFi to DeFi in order to find the right spot for uh, people who have an innovative mindset that want to build, let me say, the next future of finance with freedom. So that's why we back together all the team that we know each other since a while. I mean, we spent like uh, two other co-founders have spent like uh, the bachelor degree together. So they were classmates there. Uh, me and the other one uh, did like the master's together in finance. So, I mean, we both, all of us know each other uh, since a while. So we decided to, to, let me say, to move from just friend to be like build us all together and we start working on uh, DeFi for Smiley's Finance. So Smiley Finance started as, uh, like we say, the concept of uh, solving the fragility for liquidity providers that were exposed to gamma risk while they were providing liquidity with the DEXs. So starting from that principle, we identified and iterated two times to find like the best cost efficient approach to allow them to have an APY that is fair based on the risk that they are having. So compensating them permanent loss that they are suffering. And on the other side, give a product for retailers that can be considered as an edging tool for LPs and create like some sophisticated strategy and trading strategy alongside like uh, not just Delta, but also Gamma and Vega. And a super speculative product for DGEN that can jump and uh, trade up to 10,000 times leverage uh, token uh, directly on chain. So this is in a very, very nutshell. So we started as a lending and borrowing mechanism for Uniswap B2. Uh, so accepting a LP token and we move from there to a synthetic approach, which we have our own uh, liquidity pools in which we, uh, we these help us to, let me say, to bring some few innovation into the ecosystem. And on the other side, to maintain the capital efficiency and avoid any bad debt for uh, both traders and, uh, and LPs. So if you want, I can give you more details about like the things that are different compared to TradFi using this product and why this product doesn't exist in TradFi as well. I don't know when, where you want to start. Okay, so there's obviously a lot to unpack here because it's not, you know, there's essentially there's just based on your, 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 your rather quick introduction, there's probably around four or five products that you guys are essentially like rolled into one. And I want to just just unpack that as we go along into this discussion because i think the 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 significance of what it is that you guys have built firstly can't be i don't think it can be overstated enough it's kind of like you 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 saw where the major issues were within you know defi at the moment and and that is primarily impermanent loss so i want to just start from that point and then kind of like build this this whole thing up from that point onwards is that in DeFi, the whole idea is for, for stakers to come in and create liquidity in order for protocols to be able to either do swaps, whether they're trading spot, whether they're trading leverage, doesn't really matter. The point is that you need liquidity to lubricate the machinery that is trade. 
you guys recognize that one of the fundamental problems within within that is that liquidity providers were obviously losing their money in the event that prices would were were going down whilst they were staking their relevant um, tokens. And you're effectively come up with another idea around how to solve this problem. I'm not entirely sure whether you have solved the problem, but there is this whole idea of impermanent gain. And I want to just unpack that because I think for me personally, like that is the most fascinating aspect of what it is that you guys have done. I mean, there's other really cool stuff, but for me, that's like the real, the real juicy bit. Yeah, sure. So let's start with impermanent gain. So how we come out with the impermanent gain idea. So the first thing that we identified was to study mathematically the impermanent loss suffered by liquidity providers. So actually the problem there is that the impermanent loss come up by the volatility of the token. So how much the token price is changing alongside the time. So this is compensated via DEXs by the uh, fact that you are receiving fee from the spot market, so swapping token. The thing is that all, most of the time, the fee, the fee that you are generating are not enough sufficient to copy and to overcome all the risk that you are suffering. So what does it mean in concrete? That we are not, let me say, removing impermanent loss from the ecosystem, but we are creating an, a, a, a new market for the impermanent loss. So as of today, we can consider impermanent loss is just suffered. So all the amount that is uh, lo uh, lost by LPs is just uh, like uh, not benefited by anyone. So actually just lost. But if you create some kind of solution that can help you on one side to edge this uh, loss or to create an, a market for having for trading this impermanent loss, you can create a new way, a stream of, let me say, return for LPs. So regarding impermanent gain, so the first thing that we identified was to mathematically decompose impermanent loss, trying to understand the impact that was having in the market. So the gamma rate exposure that was creating, how can be reflected into derivative solution. So by doing this, we designed, let me say, the derivative that is uh, convex and not linear. So it's, uh, as I call, I call him, I call it, it's like curvy payoff because it's not uh, linear as an option. And being curvy, actually, we identify that, that this derivative is actually something that doesn't exist so far, both in TradFi and DeFi. And what are the benefits of having a new product like this in DeFi first? First of all, for sure, it's the natural edge for LPs. So actually convexity is like the best way to edge your LP payoff. Second one, as the convexity brings like even more implied leverage and an option, it can create an, let me say a market for like a super, uh, for like strong speculation. And this creates also a new way of considering the derivatives market because you don't have any more, let me say the counterparty risk and the counterparty match. So it's not anymore one cell in permanent loss, the other one gain in permanent gain, but it's a pool of people providing liquidity implicitly selling in permanent loss. So we are able to take this impermanent loss as a, as, as a portfolio and decompose it into single pieces for each trader. So actually, uh, if, if we expand this concept into plain vanilla option, there is people that can trade in and out thanks to the volatility AM without having a specific counterpart for that specific product. So it's opening up the option market to be scaled to with on chain liquidity for any kind of token. If do you guys do you, does Smiley have the ability to essentially automatically balance the trade per se? Like from a so if if there's say an LP that's been created at a thousand dollars and the price moves a hundred dollars below that threshold, how does the mechanism within Smiley practically rebalance according to that is it a manual process or is it an automatic process that 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 happens so actually everything has been embedded into the smart contract so that's why it took a while for us to build uh, uh, this this smart contract and uh, all the mechanics that are into that i will decompose it into single pieces so the first one is the liquidity to volatility engine it is like a, a full comprehension of formulas into the smart contracts that sorted out mathematically all the position and the payoffs and so that's automatically remove any bad debt because there are not like external dynamics that can impact, let me say, the, 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 the way that we are doing this mathematically. And this is the first thing. So that uh, gives the LPs like for the first time the clear, uh, a clear view of what are the real risks that they are doing, uh, they are encountering while providing liquidity. So it's not like 
providing liquidity in uh, any other option of derivatives protocol in which you are not able to calculate uh, your risk and your payoff. So here it's like super clear because it started from everything starts from as an LP, you have the DEX LP payoff. So in concrete, this is like similar to providing liquidity in a DEX, yes, but there are some things that are different. First of all, you have new free streams of revenues that are different. So you are not paid again based on the fee, but on the implied volatility that you are selling via the permanent gain. So that means that all the premium collected by the protocol automatically goes back to LPs. And this is the first one. Into the smart contract, we embedded also the volatility AMM. So a, a possibility to give traders the, to buy in and uh, go and sell the position whenever they want. So they don't, they don't have to wait until expiry. So like standard option market. And this brings another way, uh, another stream of revenues for LPs. That is the, all the bid ask spread that is automatically calculated and give back to LPs. So the volatility AMM revenues is based on uh, the bid ask spread generated is just reserved for LPs. And the third one is an, auto, an embedded trading strategy that is into the smart contract that actually we uh, called it atomically delta edging. This is a uh, uh, let me say a math formula trading strategy that run into every single block of the protocol. So that means that all the time there is a trade in that same the same block, the strategy automatically run in favor of LPs. That means that is able to let me say it's not like a, the best way to say that, but it's able to extract value from the market and give it back to LPs. And this is mitigating automatically the loss versus rebalance. Everything is sorted automatically. It can be customized. So actually, once we will turn into a permissionless model, permissionless model, everyone can set it up the, the rules for creating their own LPs with their own strategies. As of today, it runs with three different like uh, rebalancing dates. They can be daily, weekly, or monthly. So actually, every week, for example, now we have just launched the weekly one. So every week, the protocol automatically rebalance the position of the payoff of the LP based on the implied volatility of the specific token of that specific pool. Okay, so is that like an exercise? Is there an exercise in incorporating AI into this kind of like process? Because I mean, I know that that AI is kind of like this, this whole like the in thing and people are talking about it. Do you believe that in terms of this rebalancing in terms of the strategy that's currently in place? Is there a place for AI? Is that something that you guys are looking at at the moment? So actually, yes, we are kind of looking at AI to try to understand how it can be mixed up into the blockchain mechanics. And to be honest, it can support and help us for like setting up like some kind of a strategies based directly running automatically based on like some uh, market dynamics, such as like uh, spikes in volatility instead of like uh, new, let me say, volumes in a specific token. So it can be prioritized that token compared to another and so on. The problem is that we are still early to embed the like AI solution into the smart contracts because uh, in my opinion, uh, the things that we built so far, it's pretty much already automatized. So uh, in, in, uh, artificial intelligence can bring us like some support in the mid term, but not in the short term, because in the short term, we're still like linked to manage the market dynamic, uh, let me say based on uh, the crypto ecosystem at all and it's difficult okay. to use ai because some some uh, parameters cannot be predicted so easily so by by the ai yeah. uh, the, the tool is not yet let me say full service on a full service model for blockchain yeah i was just for me it's it's like there's almost like this almost seems like the perfect application for ai i mean obviously like you say you know the parameters aren't that straightforward i think it's quite a compli complex mathematical construct that you'd have to come up with i mean obviously the ai would have to be very fine-tuned for this kind of thing but it just seems like a logical and almost like inevitable you know path that will play out um yeah i think it's i think it's really interesting in terms of how you you maximize you know the efficiency of this thing and i would imagine that if there was ever going to be a scenario for AI to come in and, and do it, it would be in something like this. But like you say, it's not it's not that straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Um I think yeah, from some a, mechanics you know, of, of AI can be like for example for integration because it can automatically like manage the fact of uh, which protocol needs to integrate with Miley and and uh, why and and uh, what time for example. I mean it can also 
be supportive on this direction. That's something that I put forth also. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, we'll just we'll just see how it kind of like develops. I mean, I know that there's a lot of a lot of protocols in the space at the moment that use AI for yield strategies, but that's very simple. You know, it's kind of like well, scan scan all protocols that do offer yield strategies and find the best one, best value for money, whatever it might be, whether it's fees, you know, percentage returns. Um, I wanted to just get into, you know, the mechanics of how the impermanent gain and also the leverage component of the different pools that you guys have set up. I know that you've broken it up as an impermanent gain around the bull, the bear, and the smile. Uh, really cool. Uh, obviously, you know, the bull and the bear kind of like explains itself. Can you just kind of go through the, 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 the three different types and how, you know, they afford users the opportunity to come in and obviously get involved in Smiley in a very simple and in a very practical way? Sure thing. So first of all, we started with the smiley, that is the volatility smile actually is uh, not far away from trading a, a long straddle. So you're buying a call and a put. But the thing is, again, that is convex, so it can match perfectly the impermanent loss. So this is started as the best hedging tool for LPs. Then we just realized that if we want to open up a trading market for this impermanent gain, you need to offer also the possibility from, uh, to user to make a speculative bet on the direction of the token. So actually that's why we split the impermanent gain into two, two pieces, that is bull and bear, that in the end mathematically need to have to match the overall, let me say, payoff for the LP on the other side. So actually you can go long and short, but in the end the payoff that they are having just adjusting the entire curve. What does it mean? It means that, for example, when we did the launch last week, it was like, uh, not all time high, but the market was pretty much better than now. So if you have both like the, the volatility, the, the smile on that side, you were like almost covered for the downside and the upside side, and you can make money out of both. So actually uh, a smile as of today is, uh, is on profit. The bear for sure is on profit because the market dropped by 15% over, over one week. So actually the, the payoff of a, of a bear, uh, bear trader is like, uh, giving a consistent return as of now, while the bull for sure, as it is long delta, is not performing well, because in the end, uh, you need to wait until the market go back on that direction. But all, in all these scenarios, you are not being liquidated. So what does it mean? So all the spikes that we realized so far, bring up some liquidation point for people, liquidation threshold for people, because from token went up, down and then it went up again to the peak and then they dropped down again so all these spiky movements uh, on a product like smiley are not impacting let me say the trader in the end and just impacting for sure the pnl but not the, the the position because the position are still live everything is still live because there is no liquidation in there so actually it means that all these fluctuation brings for sure value who is trading a, a smiley but who, who is trading a bull in a bull for example at the moment the bull in permanent gain yes is suffering a potential potential loss but not a realized loss because it's not being is not being liquidated and actually it can uh, offset the downside or the upside can also like uh, match and help you if you are doing a trade a pair of trading to cover your liquidation threshold and to let me say support to avoid that your capital being liquidated experience you like a certain loss because if you have the specular position the opposite position of smiley all the money that you're losing and potentially you are gaining on the other direction and vice versa so actually it's like a trading a pair because the trading experience is pretty much smooth so in few clicks you can buy the position leverage is implied by the, the is calculated by the implied volatility of the token so actually for example we have seen like a spike in volatility on arbitrum so that brings like to, to an increase and then a decrease in leverage. And how does it work? For sure, this is impacted by the theta. So as there is the weekly expiry, the leverage will uh, move also based on the time uh, that you are missing uh, between now and the expiry date. So it's pretty much complicated to explain, but when you try the app, it's even easier because you don't see like all the financial engineering behind the stuff. You just see like a smooth UI and uh, some chart that help you to understand like what has what has to be the price change of that specific underlying asset to make you uh, do that amount of profits why would i why would i involve myself in something like 
the bull, the bear, or the smiley, as opposed to just going on to either a decentralized exchange or a centralized exchange and opening a long or a short or opening both to be Delta neutral. Why would I choose smiley? So actually, first of all, as I was saying before, uh, if you are trading on perps, the major difference is the fact that you are not having any liquidation threshold. So you just pay the premium and the premium that you pay based on the collateral that you need to provide on option and perps is way, way lower. I mean, there is no need for collateral because it's self-collateralized the position. So actually it's like a cheaper compared to bringing collateral to do that specific trade. Compared to any DEX, I mean, uh, capital efficiencies uh, led you to have like uh, a more potential return compared to another derivative. So that means that if the price go up to 20%, the money that you can, the, the, your PNL can be up to 10,000% in Smiley instead of like 5,000% with a 50 times per. I mean, I'm just like putting like some raw numbers, not doing calculation to uh, let you understand it. it. It can become more profitable than, than uh, 50 times per and also to an option. So that's the thing. And if you want to replicate the same position on sex, like Derivic, for example, if you are a sophisticated trader, you have to pay, you have to pay like uh, uh, for sure the premium for the option that you are trading and you need to pay as well, like uh, all the other things that, uh, for, for uh, collateralization and, and similar. So actually it's way cheaper. Uh, it can, it's way cheaper than uh, setting up the same complicated strategy using uh, centralized exchanges or decentralized exchanges. Okay, that's that's a very good motivation. I think, um, yeah, it is. I like the fact that you don't have the liquidation aspect. I think that really does is the big distinguishing factor. And then, obviously, from a time from a time perspective, you did mention kind of like the expiry on this. Is it? What is the time period on each trade? So is it within a window of opportunity within the within that particular pool? How does that? What is the mechanism, and what are those time frames? Okay, as of today, I mean, during the testnet, we tested out like zero TDA option, so one day expiry, weekly and monthly. So let me give an overview about all the three. So why we are setting up an expiry date in in our in our let me say product for two main reasons. So first of all. First of all, because we know that uh, in TradFi, let me say short-term, uh, derivatives are preferred compared to long-term one. And secondly, because uh, expiry date help you to price the option. So actually you can have the price of the impermanent gain at the beginning. You don't need to fund, to do, to provide funding rate and stuff like this. So uh, in the, lo in, uh, let me say during the, the weekly period time, for example, it's cheaper. For sure, if you need to buy that for four months, it would be better to buy like a monthly expiry date instead of a weekly. How does it mean like weekly, daily or, or monthly? So actually the weekly have been matched with Derivit. So actually the, uh, the, start, the, let me say the starting date, the expiry date is like 8 a.m. UTC. So it's like, a, it's like the same of Derivit. So these help like arbitrageur, for example, on Ether PTC because actually you have like the same expiry and you can replicate on Derby the position that you have on Smiley. And so you can have like some strategy based just on the volatility that is priced on chain versus off chain because we price volatility on chain. We have like our customized bonding curve running up. How we do this? Rolling, uh, sorry, rebalancing the strategy of the LPs and that specific time period. So every week, we, one, we, once we rebalance the strategy, we open up the new vault. So that means that all the vault expiry and new vault coming up. So this is the process. So, and uh, can be done daily and monthly as well, based on uh, the frequency of the rebalancing date of LPs. And this can be customized because with some players that we want to work with, we can create some kind of customized like time period in order to match like the specific need of the partner. So is there a, a lending and borrowing component part of Smiley at the moment? So if I want to come so, in as a lender or as a borrower, yeah. So actually as of today, it's not, it cannot be possible to do that like uh, via Smiley, but we are cooperating and, and, uh, and starting discussion with lending and borrowing platform because in the end, as the, the, let me say, the liquidity is managed like uh, synthetically, we don't provide, let me say, liquidity to Uniswap, for example. We use Uniswap for swapping like, uh, I don't know, 1,000 transactions per week, for example. 
and some we have some residual balance of liquidity that can be in one asset on the others that can be let me say used managed or uh, integrated with lending and borrowing platforms so it can be served to them and can provide additional let me say return for lps potentially so it's something that we are discussing especially like uh, in some ecosystem like uh, better chain for example that everything is based on liquidity so we are working with them with all the let me say lending and borrowings uh, DEXs and uh, all the solutions that are uh, rotating around, let me say, uh, liquidity management uh, in different ways. Yeah, I mean, you obviously have brought up something that's quite close to, to block mates, and that's obviously bearer chain. We, we, we consider ourselves to be bearer mates. Uh, we really like what they're doing. Um, and it's really cool to hear that, you know, Smiley's stepping into, you know, that arena. And, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how, you know, something or an ecosystem that everyone's kind of joked about for a better part of the year, we believe is going to land up being something that's going to be really serious. And I think there's going to be a multi multitude of products that, in my opinion, are going to land up almost kind of like reimagining the DeFi space. And I'm not surprised you guys are getting involved. I think there's quite, there's, there's a huge amount of innovation in, in terms of the way that you guys have approached this. Um, you know, the ideas might not necessarily be new ideas, but I think the execution is definitely a, a new way of doing it. And, you know, the fact that you can't get liquidated, the, the fact that there is kind of like short, medium and long term rebalancing around these pools is is amazing to see. Um, I'm curious from a from a, an LP provider or someone who has capital who wants to come in and essentially get the benefit of essentially being in, a, I would imagine, a neutral position what what opportunities are you guys affording somebody who's got obviously the liquidity and you know what are the benefits of them coming into the ecosystem and, and providing liquidity so actually yes just just to give like another word about uh, better chain yes we, we are into better chain because it's like super innovative and actually they are building a new way of designing like the validation system in a blockchain so we are super fan of it because it's uh, it's something new. I mean, uh, you know, we didn't fork any line of code. We did everything by our own. So we are like uh, inno innovators. So we like innovators. Uh, this, how can it reflect for an LP is both on like in every chain, let me say. So actually, what's the difference? So for example, if you are, if you were providing liquidity in a DAX LP, and so you have like long-term horizon perspective. So you, you want to let me say, have half of the exposure of the debt of the specific token, you have USDC, and you want to have an APY return in USDC while benefiting from some debt exposure of the specific other underlying asset. So you can bring liquidity into Smiley. What does it mean? So it means that you have all the, pre the premium collected brings like an APY that is, is being demonstrated in one of our paper that I can, uh, that is in our uh, medium channel, can be even, uh, can be higher, more profitable than an XLP. And that is based on the impermanent loss that is sold. In the case that the utilization rate of the protocol is below 50%, for example, no, is, this is an, a scenario in which you are gaining less, let me say, APY compared to Uniswap, but actually you are suffering half of the impermanent loss compared to providing liquidity to ADEX. So actually always like benefit and uh, risk are balanced over, the, the, over the, your position as LP. And the thing is that you are also not exposed anymore to some, sometimes of intrinsic risk that you have while, while you are providing liquidity. So, for example, being front runner, receiving MEV attacks, or just like uh, just in time liquidity, and then you so always are not swap, uh, not pro, uh, not receiving, let me say, the best out of the 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 strategy that you are setting up as LP. So in Smile, you cannot suffer these kind of things, and on top of it, you have like. Pay, uh, the premium, uh, sorry, the APY based on the volatility of this experience. So it's perfectly matching your risk. You have like, uh, and you have like on top of the other two mechanics that are running up in, in, in internally to the protocol. So the the BDAX spread generated by the volatility AMM and the Delta and the Delta aging tool. This bring us to have this synthetic pool that in the end we want to in the mid long term, let me say, uh, to transform into uh, Uniswap liquidity, because the idea is to fully get integrated with them uh, with routing a hook system 
so becoming a part of Uniswap potentially. I mean, you guys aren't quite a DEX and you aren't quite an AMM. How would you describe yourselves as being? I mean, it's kind of like it's the best of both those worlds, but then there's obviously the tra the ability to trade either long or short or delta neutral. What do you, how do you see yourselves in the market as a product? So how do you approach other protocols that you want to work with? You're not a DEX, you're not an AMM. What exactly are you? Exactly what we are, as, I mean, what we are, uh, in my opinion, uh, we are two things that can mix it up, mix it, uh, that can be mixed up together. So first of all, as a product, we are like, a, let me say a trading platform that is working or having like a UI UX that uh, is supporting like new retailers, uh, new DGEN to jump in and trade the volatility instead of just trading spot. So that's why we called ourselves like the Tinder of option. Uh, I don't know if you follow this narrative, but because the, our mobile version works like with swiping, so you can swipe left and right, and you can do like uh, in few clicks, like uh, a new, uh, really new like user experience for trading. But we are not just that one. What we are is also like the missing building block, in my opinion, of the DeFi ecosystem to bring volatility on chain. So we are an AMM, yes, but we are a volatility AMM. So the things that we do is automatically market making the pricing of volatility, not the pricing of the spot market. That's why we integrate with Dexy. We work now with Uniswap, but we soon integrate like Camelot, Trader Joe, and any other Dexes on top of us. So we are not competing with them in the end. We are just like a, a building block that can be, let me say, plugged in and offer like our solution into their LPs or optimize their APY. We are not at all, we are not an option AMM in the end. We are a volatility AMM. What does it mean? That once we uh, move on and scale up the liquidity, we will uh, have the possibility to mint plain vanilla option and not just in permanent gain. That we know that as of today is not like a, a, a mature market. It's still like in scouting, in, uh, in uh, still like people is still like understanding and trying and using option like and they are just need they just need some education out of it but we want to be ready for the moment that they will jump in and so we want to start of, uh, working and cooperating with all the option protocols in the ecosystem especially the one that are like at the need of uh, receiving us volatility on chain so what that 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 is mean that smile can be the source of liquidity for option protocol actually so like an on-chain market making maker that is bringing uh, RFQ and price for options to option protocols. So, I mean, this is a really interesting topic and, and something that, that still really confuses me is this whole idea within the context of TradFi that options are the most used, essentially, instrument in terms of predicting markets. Yet in the crypto space and on blockchain, we've actually seen a lot of protocols come up with some really great ideas around options trading, but they've almost come short. And there's no, there doesn't seem to be an interest around users to participate in options. And I was just curious, just from your personal perspective, um, I think you guys, by the way, have overcome the idea of trading options by almost incorporating it into a functional, you know, go long, go short you know, obviously with the rebalancing and, and that it's almost like you've repackaged the same thing. But I'm just curious, is it a matter of repackaging the way that you guys have done it? Or how does essentially like a true a true options protocol, do they have to repackage the way that they present this product? Is there hope for options in the crypto space with time? I mean, where do we kind of stand with options as a raw product as an options product right now in, in, in the blockchain slash crypto space? So to be honest, one year and a half ago, my answer would have been different. One year and a half ago, I would have, I would answer like, uh, maybe the main problem for option protocol is that they are just trading Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they don't have long tail assets that are the most interesting uh, pro, uh, token to trade for a region. So that's why we open up this, this uh, mechanism that can allow us to create, let me say, a derivative in the volatility market for any kind of token until there is just a bit of liquidity. So this was the first problem. And this is still like a bit of the problem, even though it has been uh, partially resolved by perps, because now there are like some perps in which you can trade like a 20, 25, 30 assets. So one year and a half ago, also perps were just uh, 
stick into like some blue chip token instead of like all the list of token. This was a problem one year and a half ago. If I had to answer again now, uh, I have seen that uh, it's not a problem of the option product itself. It's just that there are solutions in, in the blockchain, for example, like some very, very, very small cap token. Then in the end, if you buy that, you have like the same risk payoff of an option. So actually people who are trading a shit coin and meme coin right now, they are not understanding that they're more or less doing the same thing uh, of trading an option. So buying a very, very low because market cap is still like very, very tiny. You are, your risk payoff is like, okay, this is the amount of money that I'm investing. It's like 95% lost in my opinion. So it's like paying a premium. But if the, if the upside happen, it's like 10, 20, 100 times upside. So the same kind level of profit that you can have on a, of an option. So it's just a matter of like letting people understand that options are actually not that far away from trading shitcoin. The problem is that they are presented in a so complicated way that people get scared out about it, in, in my opinion. So that's why we pack it, we pack it into a permanent game. Because we do believe that the uh, DGEN needs to be the first, let me say, uh, market feed that you need to test. Because we have a bunch of institutional uh, and uh, edge fund and people that are, we are speaking with about uh, all the mechanics and the financial engineering in the egg smiley. But they are players that bring like 20 million liquidity they want to trade like million of, 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 of stuff. As we are in DeFi and we are on chain, we do believe that first of all, you need to attract your, your uh, retail user base by your own and then you can scale up with that direction. By doing, doing this, you need to educate the system of trading your product. We just realized that educating trading in permanent gains, so go long, short, delta neutral, was easier to create, a, let me say, an overall comprehensive uh, education about option. That is something that we are monitoring in the ecosystem. I mean, I'm a super fan of the option protocols and I'm looking what they are doing on the education side of uh, side. Uh, side and uh, I always try to jump in and try to support them because I think that if we collaborate all together, it will be better because in the end, if you look at off chain C5 option is a billion and billion trading volume. If you look at the on, on, on the same thing in DeFi, you have two main problems. First of all, yes, there is a liquidity fragmentation. So you can, you cannot trade like option as on C5 because the, the, there is not enough, let me say liquidity of, and offering of option in DeFi. So this is one of the problems that we need to solve all together. And that's why we want to serve this liquidity corruption protocol, solving one of the first problem. The second one needs to be done all together and needs to educate the ecosystem. And to make it like affordable, because I mean, 98% of the trading volume comes from derivative for options. I love the way that you compare kind of like the, it's almost like a beta, like people talk about the beta of Ethereum, the beta of like, and this is almost like options are like a beta of, of perpetuals. I mean, maybe I am stretching it here, but it's like, in this case, you're obviously like looking at shit coins from a, like, it's almost like a testing ground. Like, how do we actually test this environment um, around volatility, around directionality? essentially like is it can you make kind of like explain to us how we evolve from this point onwards like as a as kind of like this 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 crazy experiment that we are right now so you've answered the question about the way that you perceived it in the past you're you've answered the question in terms of the way that you see it now where do you see us going into the future from a smiley perspective, right? Because obviously there's, 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 there is a clear vision here that you have as a founder. And then also from a smiley perspective, but also as an industry perspective right now, what does the future hold with no, big industry? Just... Well, big players coming in, you know, obviously big liquidity, yeah. ETF, all of that kind of stuff. I know that it's a big question, but I think it's really pertinent in my, my opinion in terms of where you guys are at. As a yeah, that's a super interesting question. And actually, yes, working around the vision since a while. And uh, it's not all, it's, it's better to talk about the past than the future because I mean, I spent two years in crypto and for me, it's like spending 10 years out of crypto because it's like everything is moving so fast that yeah. uh, like one day is not enough to be like always up to date with all, all, all the things that are popping up. 
in the ecosystem. My vision is we are building DeFi. DeFi is called like decentralized finance. So Smiley Vision is to become like a fully permissionless model that can be used by everyone and can serve, let me say, the DeFi ecosystem to solve like some uh, fragility problem that they have so far. What does it mean? It means that we are still stuck on believing that liquidity is a core principle of decentralization. So I do believe that DeFi can become like a, a, com a comparable ecosystem with TradFi. That's my vision, my personal vision in a few years in which like a solution in TradFi and DeFi in, in, are interconnected. And most of the TradFi solution are also on chain because it's bringing more efficiency and is eliminating like some trust issues and a potential like uh, uh, and potentially problem for the end user how managed by the fact that uh, depositors the liquidity providers are compensating for giving liquidity so as of today if you deposit your money in the bank it's rarely that you receive back some money actually you pay some cost so this is something that in my opinion can be reshaped totally by DeFi. And the second one is to have the possibility to give access to a trading market for everyone. So what Smile is doing is reimagining and rebrand and redefining the standard of the derivatives market, the volatility market, let me say. And this is the same thing that Perhaps Future has done in the past. Yeah. Reimagining everything, not just like uh, keeping some uh, keeping some basic best practice from both TradFi and DeFi, but the idea is to make something new that can work for new people. So people who have never touched option, what they, but they want to jump in trading. So this is a target user that we want to have in the future. Because I do believe that in the next two to three years, trading will not be just for traders, but will be for everyone. As we have experienced with, uh, during the COVID with Robinhood, finally, uh, Robinhood brings option for retailers, easy to trade and stuff like this. Same for uh, uh, leverage product and so on. So that was the first part, in my opinion, for the revolution that trader wa uh, trading was just for traders and retailers doesn't have to trade or just have to have like risk at their position. Now people is getting interested and actually people is transforming like day to day, 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 -to -day business into tra trading activities and so on. So all, always more retailers inbound in the market. And this, in my opinion, is like the, the, most, the most important thing that we need to take over for the next couple of years, because everyone needs to be ready and have like the specific, uh, let me say the specific setup uh, made, uh, tailor made for the, their specific need. So uh, as Miley, yes, I mean, uh, I think I addressed all the points that I wanted to address, but another thing is what should be Smiley in few years potentially should be a, a mobile app in my opinion. For, yeah. for end so, user and they all the infrastructure run on chain yes. with all the mathematics and things run properly but the, with the, the super easiness to to use uh, for uh, super easy to use for uh, for retailers and uh, people yeah i think you know something that i really enjoy about what you guys have done is that there's been and we haven't spoken about it much but it can't once again it can also like you can't talk about it enough is the importance of ui ux it's obviously been one of the big stumbling blocks especially when we look at kind of like DeFi summer 2020 and then 2021 and and you know we were always really just happy to you know almost like like look under our mattress to try and figure out how DeFi works and you know because there was all this opportunity there and the inefficiency that was with it and and it's still a highly inefficient market we know this but the key is to obviously be able to present this in a way that essentially any idiot can use and and i think that's been been the biggest kind of like stumbling block i believe for for DeFi to be accepted all around and i think you guys have done a really good job around understanding that firstly and then secondly like tackling the whole mobile thing tell us a bit about that journey and and where you guys are at right now and it seems like you're not entirely satisfied but you obviously are getting there from a you know, from a mobile perspective, yeah, give me your take on it and, and where, you know, where you are now and where you'd like to be from a mobile uh, perspective. Okay, cool. So yes, we have always had a focus on UI UX because one of my first struggling points when I was in DeFi and enjoying DeFi summer was that the, 
he said the user experience was still like very tough, even though I was having like huge experience in finance and so on. So it was requiring users to study in details how to interact with some specific apps and so on. Something that in my opinion has seen like a changes right now because now the user interaction and user experience is like super easy is not not super easy, easy at all but it's easier than before and some players are working on this very well like for example uniswap wallet is a or all the account abstraction up chain narrative stuff like this is supporting on that direction um with smiley we started like uh, yes being mobile first but with uh being uh, uh being uh, already like uh, uh I mean, we, we already knew in advance that being mobile first was a tough decision because in the end, uh, is, people is still reluctant on using like MetaMask on mobile for security principles. And, uh, and also like the overall, let me say, evolution of the mobile application for DeFi and for crypto is not yet ready, but we wanted to be there once it will arrive. So I do believe that it will arrive in a couple of months, maybe six months, maximum one year. And we will be ready. We will be there. We'll be there. Actually, we have already worked on a new user interface and user UI UX for Smiley. We have already like something that we will drop up in the coming, let me say, months and not weeks because I don't want to give like too much importance for it for the moment. But yes, we are working on a new desktop version and we are working on a new mobile version to make it even easier to use. We do believe that mobile will come up because in the end, like. Uh, Again, I mean, my target is still Robinhood. Robinhood is uh, working very well on mobile and it helps you to jump in and out. I mean, I'm a frequent, I'm a daily GMX user on mobile, for example, because if I see the news and I'm, uh, I'm at work or I'm doing a conference or I'm enjoying an happy hour, I don't know, whatever I'm doing, but if there is a market si signal, I want to take it in that specific time because in crypto, as I was saying before, time is fast. It's faster than normal time. So if something happen, happen in, a, in, a, in a range of period of time that can be also 10 minutes. And if you want to be there in that specific min, 10 minutes, you need to have access, you need to, to be allowed to access to that to specific trading app via your mobile phone. So it's just an alternative of using sex in my opinion. So I do prefer to use, uh, to open up MetaMask apps on more list and trade on, uh, I don't know, perhaps apps uh, like, uh, I don't know, GMX, uh, Synthetics or Larry Quenta and so on. Yep, I do prefer to do that instead of doing a KYC and uh, do uh, give my money into a sex for the moment. And I do believe that uh, on chain should go into that direction, and we need to go everyone on that side. Otherwise, the gap between CFI and DeFi will never be, let me say, uh, solved. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I am a DeFi maxi, and I, I believe that that's for the very reasons that you've stated in our chat today you know those are the things that i think are really important you know obviously decentralization you know liquidity and the importance of that function um and obviously you guys are recognizing this and you're putting your money where your mouth is and more importantly that your time to to build this kind of stuff i mean you guys you know kind of like joked at the start of this chat about you know meeting you guys in the bear market i mean you are a very good example of a protocol that you know was essentially like born in the bear in many ways and you you kind of like you you did the grind you've you've launched you guys launched last week um you're well well up and running and obviously there's you know the opportunity for users to explore and and, and use the protocol and obviously encourage people who do hold the values of, of DeFi to go and check you guys out, not only from a, a user experience, but more importantly, to be able to trade, you know, in these positions that, you know, allow you to, to, to be free of liquidation and to, I think it's a different perspective on the way that the market's being played at the moment. So, yeah, thank you, sir, for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure to, I think, just scratch the surface. There's a whole lot of stuff that I would have loved to have gotten into, but I think we probably would have been here for another three hours. Um, yeah, it's been really impressive to see what you guys have built and yeah, I really appreciate your time. And I'm sure we'll get you guys back on at some point. Uh, just before we close off, what are the kind of like the more immediate things that you guys are focusing at the moment? I know that you mentioned Verichain. 
but just looking at you got where you guys are now, what do you envisage for the next six to 12 months? So actually for the next six to, six to 12 months, we want to scale up the LB2 ecosystem first. And we are doing that with a like, strong partnership with the foundation and all the uh, off-chain lab teams because we have been building there like since the beginning. So they are super bullish on the fact that we are building something new, that's something that doesn't exist yet. And we and, and the Arbitrum will be like the first place to be there. Scale up that via, let me say, I mean, during the, in the next six to 12 months, the big things coming up are like the deployment of Vera Chain as well. I mean, it's not, it's still on testnet. So once it will be live, we will be live there since day one, because we have been like uh, cooperating and working with them since more than one year. So then, then was, I mean, yes, one year ago, it was like uh, popping up. It was not like uh, the most hyped ecosystem right now. And they did like a very great job. And behind the scene, they are making something like a super, super serious. So we want to be there as well. So this will be like the first thing that we will scale up. Second one, we will uh, com uh, announce and uh, do the token generation event during this year. So this will, will be like another huge milestone for us. So even on that side, we are working deep in the tokenomics, trying to understand what are the best practice of the talk uh, of tokenomics launched so far and what can be innovated over there. Because I do believe that there is still space of, uh, for tokenomics to, to become a new standard. I mean, even tokenomics on a philosophy perspective can be like something reshaping even TradFi as well. And uh, we want to waive the real world asset narrative. We are waiting real world assets like to jump in. So we will allow to trade volatility on real world assets. But in the very, very short term, let me say that uh, maybe the most interesting thing can be for a DGEN to trading permanent gain of some like uh, super long tail asset with up to 20, 20 times leverage. So imagine trading like uh, whiff with leverage and no liquidation. So that can be like a super new narrative for uh, DGENs and, uh, and operator like this. And uh, same for uh, new token that are not yet live in the market. So there are a bunch of things that we are uh, understanding and monitoring and we want to be like the first jumping in. Uh, in the next six to 12 months. But Berry Chain will be like a really much uh, huge milestone for us because an entire uh, blockchain focused on liquidity and we are building on top of liquidity. So it's like the best ecosystem for a solution like Smile. Wow. I mean, I loved what you guys were doing before. Now I'm just super bullish. Um, I love it. Uh, can't wait. Uh, I actually didn't want to chat. About, I, I, not that I didn't want to, but I never really planned to chat about the TGE and, and the tokenomics. But it's really cool to hear that you guys want to, you know, a lot of protocols like talk about wanting to rethink tokenomics and the whole thing, but it always lands up most of the time being the same thing. I mean, there are a couple that we've seen over the last 12 months that have really like taken the tokenomics idea to the new level. I actually believe you when you say that you're going to do something different. We'll save that for another show. Like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure. Definitely a lot more bullish about Smiley than I was before, and I was already really bullish. Um, yeah, you guys myself. seem to be ticking all the right boxes, absolutely smashing it, and really looking forward to you guys on Bear Chain. We'll obviously chat to you guys when that happens. Um, can't wait. I can't wait for Bear Chain as well. I was going to ask you when you think um bear chain was going to launch but we'll leave that for another time because i know that smoky will kill us if you said yeah, exactly. anything <laughs> so thank you he sir. always text me like don't leak anything <laughs> he's always like no, don't leak anything like, i don't leak anything no worries <laughs> <laughs> thank you so thank much, you so much. Forward... it's been a super yeah. pleasure yeah thanks so much all the best all right thanks for listening if you enjoyed the show please give us a like subscribe and turn the notification bell on for next time see you